the Electoral Commission this week addressed the press, admitting a number of things. This is Dr. Bosman Asari, who is a Deputy Commissioner in charge of Corporate. Uh, um, that's affairs. He's joining us. In fact, let's let's hear from that press conference that he addressed within the week. Then we'll get to the Electoral Commission. Take a look. This is a transparent and inclusive process that is not exclusive to the EC. Therefore, unless they can show any proof, those alleging that the commission is trying to cook data should be ignored. As a commission, we continue to demonstrate and reflect the values of transparency, integrity, and fairness in all our operations. We are fully mindful that the voters' register is the bedrock and foundation of an election. We are well aware that a credible voters' register is a sine qua non for a transparent, peaceful, and fair election. The Commission is committed to conducting and delivering free, fair, transparent, peaceful, credible, and inclusive elections in December 2024. We entreat the general public to support the Commission for successful general elections in 2024. Uh, that's the Electoral Commission there asking for that support and their commitment to ensuring a free and fair and transparent election. The Deputy Commissioner at the EC in charge of corporate services, Dr. Bosman Asari. Then the, there was that admission that indeed there were some illegalities that had been identified and they just, after they just ended voter exhibition exercise. The NDC had raised concerns about that. The Pusiga constituency, the Electoral Commission said, as a result of some of the issues raised there, they have suspended the EC official in Pusiga for unauthorized voter transfer. Emphasis on the unauthorized voter transfer. This is Dr. Bosmansari again. Take a look. The voters involved in the Tamil South and Sangnerigu constituencies incident have denied taking part in a transfer exercise. What they have alluded to is that their voter ID cards were collected by one Haruna Muniru, ostensibly for the processing of a loan. Preliminary investigations by the Commission have revealed that voter transfers were indeed effected for 38 individuals using the credentials of an electoral commission official. The commission has suspended the Pusiga district electoral officer and has invited him to respond to the commission's findings. And it was not just Pusiga alone. The Ejumako Enyan Esiam constituency, and that's a constituency of the minority leader, Dr. Kesela Tufosin. The electoral commission also did admit to some errors committed inadvertently. Take a look. The preparations towards the 2024 exhibition exercise, the absent voters list and the transferred voters list inadvertently included all transfers that had been done since 2020 when this register was first prepared. This has resulted in a higher than expected number of absent and transferred voters. This understandably may have caused some anxiety to our stakeholders, as exemplified by the press conference addressed by the NDC in the Ejumaku Enyan SCM constituency of the central region. The Commission has corrected this anomaly and will share with all the political parties the corrected absent and transferred voters list. Well, so that's Dr. Bosman Asari there. And Ms. Adam, this is what I bring you because you I'm talking about the NDC raised these concerns. You've asked for a forensic audit. The Electoral Commission says, well, these issues you raised, we've identified a number of them. We have taken corrective measures, put a liveliness check in place to reassure you that some measures have been put in place. Yesterday, you requested for a meeting. The Electoral Commission granted that meeting. But that call for a forensic audit, they are not supporting that. Why do you think that's needed? Well, once again, thank you for the opportunity. And let me say that we are dealing with a commission that is behaving as if 
they have just started, but the commission didn't just start. This is a commission that at least have supervised eight elections, if we want to add the one that the interim electoral commission did in 1992, eight elections. Right? And then we've had other by-elections and, of course, runoffs. But unfortunately, over the period since the Jim Mensa Bosman Asari leadership assumed responsibility of our electoral commission, so much has been done to reduce the credibility of these very great institutions that Kujua uh, Farijan, Doctor, and other persons like Charlotte or say have led and built a credibility for. This is so before, if you look at what they have done, the constitution is fundamentally clear. If you look at Article 42, that every Ghanaian of sound mind is entitled to vote. And in doing so, that person must be registered. If you continue to Article 45E, the Electoral Commission again is mandated to undertake programs to expand access for persons to what, register. Unfortunately, the Jimensa and Bosman led administration have worked to narrow access. When we were going to have registration, they first started by if you didn't have a Ghana card, you would not be admitted onto the voter register. We fought and fought and fought. Finally, when the registration was over, the percentage of Ghanaians who were 18 years and above who registered and without Ghana card, who didn't have Ghana card, was around 70%. Meaning that Jimensa and her commissioners were working to deny 70% of those persons from having access to register and therefore a right to vote. That was the first one. We fought and cured that one. Recently, we went again for another limited registration. The same thing happened. We have opportunity to deal with some of these situations, such as when registration is going on because it's happening for maybe two weeks. So day one, there are problems with codes not being sent, activation codes not being sent to district uh, re re registration officers for them to activate the system in order to be able to register persons. It continues into day two, network failures, names being placed somewhere that they should not be placed. All these, we have opportunity to deal with them when they do appear and they are sent. But because repeatedly, Alfred, they have been happening in every project of the Electoral Commission under the Mensa and Bosman. Some have come to the conclusion that this is deliberate and it's not normal mistakes that it's happens. Inadvertent errors. Uh, uh, I'm saying that some have come to the conclusion that these are not inadvertent errors. These are deliberate orchestrations because for some of it to happen, you need the support of the system. Ordinarily, you and I would not have the codes of the Electoral Commission to do transfers as has happened. So it will take only someone working within the system to be able to do so. Repeatedly, we're going into registration, you did this, your estimates were poor, activation numbers didn't go, uh, biometric devices getting missing under CCTV uh, uh, monitoring without you reporting on. Later on, you said it was not a, a BVD devices, only for persons to be picked up somewhere having those devices. We've had all these instances of mm -hmm. every activity of the Electoral Commission, you find this situation. On the day of election, Alfred, you do not have time to come and solve these problems. Election starts from 7 a.m. and ends at 5 p.m. If you have not joined the queue, as at 5 p.m., you cannot even vote. So we cannot allow, whether deliberate or in, in inadvertent errors, to happen on that day. How do we assure ourselves that truly we have put a system in place that lawyer Martin Pebu would not register at TV3? And on the day of election, even after exhibition where he found his name in TV3, on the day of voting, when he appears in TV3, they say his name has moved to Cantonment Police Station. And therefore, after queuing 
enriching his pen, he will now be told that, no, we didn't find your name here, and that go somewhere else. It is only through a forever. Of the system, you are you, 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 okay. the lying brigade. You are the, <laughs> the lying brigade. They're not performing. He was still, he was still believing that Baumia was economic whiskey mm -hmm. until, until they did them the hanging, and then they realized that uh, Baumia was a disaster. He was just well, packaged. Well, he was just packaged and sold. You second guess and, my thing. So, no, I'm not second guessing. I'm sitting right here. Is that all? So, in 2012, these issues were raised when people thought that uh, mm -hmm. they found certain things unclear. That was the first time Ghana Electoral Commission was embarking on a biometric voter registration. We were moving from the manual auto system into a biometric. The MPP then raised issues and said they wanted an audit of the system. Kojoa Farijan doctor, knowing too well that he had nothing to hide, accepted it. The UNDP and other partners came in. The audit was done. What happened? The respect for the commission went high. Today, many years on, the same person, some of who were in civil society and some lecturers, mm -hmm. acad uh, academicians who were commenting mm -hmm. and pushing for that to happen, now are given the opportunity to run the same commission and one error after the other as they want us to believe that it's not deliberate. And the call is that, let's do a forensic audit so that we can all be assured that tomorrow, Nana Hininto will not appear somewhere and they say, you are not here. Because deliberately so, persons who did not transfer their votes, we have found out that they have done transfers for them. Persons who registered in 2020 and their names were found in the 2023 and they took part in the district level elections in 2023 only for the register to be exhibited in 2024, and their names are not in. And mm -hmm. Alfred, the worst part was that the register that was given to the NDC on the 19th of August, mm -hmm. a day before the commencement of what? The exhibition exercise was different in some instances from what the Electoral Commission itself took to the were pulling stations for exhibition. Were different. Were different. The data, uh, the data in what was given to the NDC at the headquarters as the provisional voter register on the 19th of August, in some situations was different from the register that was exhibited. How could this have happened? Mm -hmm. If what we had was the same as what they presented, you can be assured that, okay, maybe it was transposition errors that happen. Mm -hmm. But you, first and foremost, you yourself committed to giving political parties that apply for the provisional register, the register earlier. You failed. On several occasions that we asked, you failed. You, you kept giving dates and failing and failing. Our director of elections kept reminding and making the public aware. Only for you to give us a register few hours before commencement. Because even on the 19th, it wasn't like the morning of the 19th. It was in the afternoon of the 19th. So it is a few hours to the commencement of exhibition. But why do you want a forensic audit? That the Electoral Commission itself said they are correcting these errors. Is it that you, see, you doubt the capacity? They have told us they were correcting errors in the past. And the errors, as you say, that you want us to accept, they were, they were inadvertent errors. Kept repeating themselves. And it is only a forensic audit that will say that, no, this system you are using is what is leading to this disaster. Like she told us that when during the registration exercise, mm -hmm. that they were using coral draw to present their, their daily data. 
when in this modern time, who uses coral draw to present data? <laughs> so out of that information, some level of suggestions were made. It's the same vein that when we do forensic audit, we will be able to see the problems and get it corrected. But the Electoral Commission, because they have an agenda, feels like, no, we will not open our, our doors, we will not Same open our systems. Even, yeah. even the media presence in the deliberation, a commission that claims to be truthful, to be factual, mm -hmm. just allow the media to sit in and hear what the, you are discussing with the political. After all, we are not discussing any national security matter. It is the register of Ghanaians who will qualify to vote? That is what we are going well, to discuss. They, they, they said in that, that statement that because these matters you had raised were not new, and so uh, having the so, media sit in so, there was, so, was not so, really needful. So if, if the argument was that there was not enough space for media to sit in, I would have bought into it. But once there is space, allow the media to decide whether we want to follow a matter that has been raised before mm -hmm. or not. But to shut them out that, no, we will not allow you in. In a system where you are supposed to be very open and transparent, it's dangerous for our democracy. But let me assure the Electoral Commission that their own people, their staff, are tired of the system. They are tired of the corruption. They are tired of the unemployment. They are tired of the disrespect. They are tired of the disregard. So everything they do, they should be asking themselves, how does the NDC get the information that they get? It is because the people you are working with know that you are. So they should just focus, do what is right, organize the free, fair, and transparent elections. Let's see the back of MPP. Let John Dramani Mahama comes in and deliver the development that is needed for the good of Nano Hininto, uh, lawyer Martin Pebu, and you, Alfred. It shouldn't matter who you are, what political party you yeah, wear, yeah, whether you are part of the great, uh, uh, is it great tra transformation, what? Mm -hmm. plan. Great transformational plan. plan. Mm -hmm. they, uh, whether you Not are part manifesto. of that, whether you are a media person, to have your freedom. It should not be the case that if government does something, and you take government on, you lose your job. Mm. That should not happen. That never happened under John Dramani Mahama. Mm. Indeed, some media persons who took him on falsely, mm. when they wrote their books mm. for economic survival, mm. he, he bought, he was one of the persons who bought copies of it. Mm. And they lived in this country to function and perform their trade. That is the type of leader we are looking so, for. And so electoral commissions should not misbehave. Well, four minutes after 10. Dr. Osai Kwapon is a Democracy and Development Fellow at the Center for Democratic Development, CDD. He's going to be joining us. But one other person that I remember I spoke to as well, who at some point also raised concerns about what the Electoral Commission was doing. But then again, you questioned the silence of the MPP. Yeah. Alhaji Haruna Mohammed yeah. is a Deputy General Secretary of the MPP. I think a couple of months ago we spoke. And there was an exercise the Electoral Commission was, was conducting, which it, they also raised concerns about. But let me find out from you. Now, I'll come to you. Alaj, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us here on Key Point. And first off, these concerns that, that the NDC has raised, well, the, the, you, the MPP, you have been not, you've not been public about it, as in declaring your... Um, concern about these issues related to some errors as identified and admitted by the Electoral Commission. Are you concerned and about, about them? I would like to say good morning to your child, to uh, you yourself and the panelists on the show. Um, I have not had the time to uh, listen extensively to uh, the position of the MDs. Uh, I the I analysis that they have done vis a vis the data of the Electoral Commission. Uh, but I, I got the import of uh, what the NDC seeks to uh, put out. There is every legitimate reason in terms of citizenship for the NDC to raise issues regarding the register that the EC is going to use. Uh, the regulation that is public elections regulations, uh, CRM 21, and also um, public elections regulations, CI. One two seven, one for registration and the other for elections. Uh, specifically, this has to do with what we call the seven to one that is registration 
and um, they've raised issues to the electoral commission, and they are calling for a forensic audit. Yes, they are calling for a forensic audit. audit. It's a right of a citizen of Ghana to be able to call for something that will contribute to transparency, something that will contribute to fairness, and what have you. However, you ask yourself, the call for this particular analysis or uh, forensic audit, does it sit within the law that regulates elections in Ghana? The answer is no. So it is not with the Electoral Commission to evaluate the request that is made by them and ask themselves, what is the position of the law to deal with their request? And if you go to CI uh, 91, Regulation 22, which has to do with compilation of provisional register, and IE CI 91, uh, Regulation 23, which says, under the compilation of the provisional register, we have exhibition, Regulation 23. The Commission shall cause the, provi the provisional register of voters of each polling station to be displayed for public inspection at the registration center for the period that the Commission may, may by notice in the Gazette specify the exhibition period. And any registered voter may inspect the provisional register of the voters to ascertain that the particulars on that on that voter's identification card are the same as the particulars contained in the provisional register of voters. And in case of any discrete policies, I said, in case of any discrete policies, request the exhibition officer to make the necessary correction in the provisional register. So correction of these anomalies that they have clearly identified sits within the law of a process that is ignored by the Electoral Commission. For me, and the MPP, we are all for what is right within the remit of the law that regulates elections, so that this can be done. So if you do a request outside the law that regulates elections, you must let the Ghanaian citizen to know that the request I am making is not in tandem with the regulations of the commission in terms of the conduct or provisions or exhibitions within the electoral system. We in the MPP have found errors before. We have gone to court, we have done an analysis of the uh, polling system that did not have serial numbers, do, uh, uh, a pink sheet that did not have uh, a code and all those things. When we uh, call for uh, forensic uh, audit, it right. is a, a court order that requested KPMG to do uh, a forensic audit and do an analysis of the pink sheet and report back to the court. So for me, uh, as a party, uh, we know that the law is there for us to use. You can go on another tangent in terms of how you look at those particular areas, but we must make sure that the law is what regulates what we do. So I can't question why the Electoral Commission has not uh, 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 answered to them because I don't speak for the Electoral Commission. In indeed. That's what and, and that's why. Right is that we focus our minds on the law that regulates elections in Ghana. Alaj, yes. And, and in fact, I don't intend to even have you ask, uh, ask quick questions bothering on why the EC has done one thing or the other. Um, I'm limited myself to w for what the N NPP has not been heard saying. You have indicated you have had issues with some data that the Electoral Commission pre presented and so on. We haven't heard you publicly speak about it. You say the, MP the NDC is within the law to ask for a forensic audit, but it, it is within their right to ask for the forensic audit, but in the, in the current status of the law, the law doesn't support that. But how about in the, in the spirit of transparency, especially because of the element of trust, which is crucial in this election that we are going into, would it be wrong to have a forensic audit done so as to answer all the questions and set aside all the doubts going into this election? Um, this, this question that you asked, him, um, we, 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 we as citizens have the right that is enshrined to us. We also have our own responsibilities to be able to achieve those particular rights. Uh, I cannot force the NDC of acting for such. And I must tell you that the NDP is not quiet uh, in terms of these particular matters. You either choose to make out your point publicly, or you write to the commission. 
which is the, the, the appropriate procedure when it comes to dealing with election matters in this country. You can decide to demonstrate which is your right within the limit of the 1992 Constitution. You can decide to do a press conference which is within the right of you within the 1992 Constitution. However, we are all is to the Electoral Commission. We, the new party party, have our own revisions. Uh, as he's saying, they received the register, the provisional register, even before us. When we went to sign and pick our provisional register, the editor had already signed and picked their own. It means that if they had even picked late, we ours were more of late than theirs. So we don't have issues with them. Uh, we have great issues about when we are doing the registration exercise. We are supposed to know the officers and their pictures. We know their whereabouts and do an investigation and write uh, a, a, a make request to commission as to whether this person should be able to recuse himself. We have not been able. So we do have a number of issues in the electoral commission when it comes to this matter. But my point here is that in regards to this particular process, I heard you asking that would the electoral commission doing that correction through the exhibition process? I heard the state you played by Bosman Asari or so. I think you are the one speaking. Yes. Uh, that they made analysis of transfers which were done from 2020, which was accumulated and put into the data. And they have still made those corrections and they will submit that data to us. Why can't all of us even wait to get the data, synchronize the data, analyze it against what they have found, and to see whether those discrepancies still exist? Any well, attempt for us to discredit the Electoral Commission is not only amount to a uh, uh, peaceful election, but also going to end the credibility of the entire country. Well, we, uh, all of us have a responsibility to contribute to our quota to ensure free, fair, transparent elections. But we must do that in moderation. Uh, we uh, must not do that by desperation. Right, Alaji. So, to the extent that, and you, you, may, you also point to that admission, yes, that the Electoral Commission has admitted to the errors. But the concern is that it's become too continuous over the period. And that sends some worrying signals as well. Does that not concern you that since the exercises that the Electoral Commission has conducted over the period, in the run-up to the election, there's been one, one error or the other, and then they will have to come back and correct it. Does that not impact on, on trust from where you sit? We are the first political party to be affected by errors of the Electoral Commission. In 2012, 270, 270 was reported as 27-0. Errors, clerical errors, which affected the, 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 the outcome of the election. That propels us through Dr. Maru Baunia to go to court. And it, it, it affected us at the end of the day. That is the, the ultimate, that is the presidency. So it, it, we are the first to be affected by errors by electoral commission, which has affected us that produced a president in this country. They are raising issues now at the time of compilation, which I think it's fair, they can make those particular issues. But we, it has affected us, even at the end of the day, when we lost the election through errors. So I cannot stand and say it is justified for electoral commission to commit errors. It is not. Absolutely not. Some of these things must be made in the past. We must take steps, the necessary steps, to make sure that errors does not exist within our electoral system. And that is why... We in the MPP have always said that we are the best setters of democracy in this country. We have contributed enough to the electoral process right from 1992, right to the days we wrote the stolen verdict, right to the days we made proposals to get biometric system, enhanced system, of which the MDC has constantly against these particular systems. I am happy that today this system are do are built on and the NDC has appreciated the fact that biometric system is the way to go. And they can now use the data to be able to analyze. And thank God that today our data does not sit with a private company where electoral commission has to also make a, a, a request to get the data to use. But the data is managed by us. Thankfully, I think that this recommendation should go to the new patriotic party, either in opposition or in government. We have continuously to hold the flag of Ghana in terms of electoral processes, positively, positively, I stress. Well, 
Alhaji Haruna Idriso is the Deputy General Secretary of the MPP. He is still. I am Haruna Alhaji Haruna Mohammed. Well, Haruna Haruna Mohammed, I beg your pardon. Hey, I, I, I'm sorry. Hey, hey, Alhaji. Al so uh, <laughs> 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 uh, Al Haruna Mohammed. Uh, so apologies for that, for that. And he's the Deputy General Secretary of the MPP. He's still with us on the telephone, by the way. He agrees. Yes, it is within your right to do so. It is a fair call by you. He, he, he and he speaks for the MPP, don't, say they don't support any form of errors in the electoral roll. But then again, that call must be within the remits of the law. This, this, the forensic this, audit this that you're asking for. What law he was quoting. Nobody is saying that someone should go and do the voter exhibition for the Electoral Commission. It is still within the law and the right of the Electoral Commission. They are supposed to conduct the exhibition of the voter register as he claimed. We are not asking that that responsibility be given to another entity to do. We are only asking that the systems that you have be audited. There be a forensic audit of how you even store your data, how you print the police station by police station data, how you do your transfers. I hear Dr. Bosman says that they have now introduced life liveliness checks. Uh, liveliness checks. But you have already done the transfers. You have done the transfers already, and we have raised this issue. Are you now going to do another transfer again? The liveliness check that you are introducing today, how is it going to solve? the problems that were created during your transfer period, including you insisting then that you didn't even want agents present. Can you imagine if we didn't insist and had agents present to be collecting the, the data daily? How would you have been doing the comparison that we are doing now? You see, this electoral commission has done so much evil to this country's election process. Right. And it's reached, they've done enough. They should realize that any time they attempt, it gets leaked, it gets out, and we deal with it. They should stop and focus on doing the right thing. And I believe that if they refuse to do it at the political party IPAC level, parliament is there. Luckily, me, I'm a member of the in, in, uh, uh, Committee on Independent uh, uh, Commissions. Mm. An electoral commission is part of the institutions that right. we are supposed to oversight. I will be speaking to our minority leader, and the majority leader is the chair of that committee, for us to have an engagement with the Electoral Commission. Because if you listen to the majority leader uh, uh, speak on Tuesday, the 3rd of September, when we came, he's just speaking along the line of, oh, don't talk about the Electoral Commission, there may be problems, but we cannot massage problems when it comes to elections. Let's deal with them, let's confront them, and make sure that nobody is denied the right to vote. If 10 people voted for you, 10 must count in your okay. favor, and well, not 100. No, no. So uh, in 2012, we, this call for the forensic audit, there's some precedence to it, right? In 2012, you, you, was, you were still with the MPP. And that call was made. It was granted. UNDP supported the process. In fact, funded the process, I remember. And some external body was brought in to do that forensic audit. We've seen this series of errors. The Electoral Commission admits, makes corrections. In this instance, they've done the same. They say they're in the process of making corrections. Is that enough to secure the process or it has also impacted on trust, which is crucial in, in any electoral process, such that an external body would have to take over the process of correcting the errors and not the commission that committed the errors itself. Well, thank you, Alfred. I think uh, this is again <coughs> one of the examples of very important national issues that tend to be reduced to MPP and DC banter when there are real issues to be dealt with. On this matter, I have already commended the NDC for initiating that critical examination. Because we, as independent, the Electoral Commission told us that since we are independent, basically the law, and they quoted the law, mm -hmm. does not allow the Electoral Commission to recognize an independent until you have filed. Meanwhile, the key instrument for this election, which is the register, you are supposed to file 
your presidential nomination forms with registered, registered voters. And you must have found have a way of checking. Somebody might show you their card, their EC card, electoral card, voters card. How do you confirm that if you don't have a register? So, but that is it. But the issue is that clearly, this is not a matter that is of interest only to MPP and NDC as political parties who are vying for political power. Mm -hmm. This is a matter that is of interest to every Ghanaian, even the non-voter, the young Ghanaian who is not even up to 17, 18, who is not even qualified to vote, the old invalid Ghanaians who may not be able to go and vote even by proxy. This is a matter that is of interest to everybody. Mm -hmm. So when it gets to the discussion, I think it is important for Electoral Commission to elevate the discourse to that level of national importance. Look, this matter of forensic audit. So elections get questioned by people. People refuse to accept election results because they suspected that along the line, some things untoward may have happened. And so therefore, electoral results are not accepted. There are disputes and societies, nations, countries descend into violence, social instability, even civil wars and so on. So if you compare the potential for disputed elections, the cost of it, as against the cost of forensic audit, which one is cheaper? To the extent that Electoral Commission does not realize that the law and everything put together, Electoral Commission is still a public institution. And I believe the Electoral Commission answers to the good people of Ghana. Of course, through Parliament, and, and the rest of it, but the Electoral Commission is also a public institution. Indeed. So if there are issues that are of interest to the public, from time to time, when it is convenient, the Electoral Commission issues press statements. It does it address only government or voters? It addresses the public because they recognize that they also need the goodwill and understanding and support of the people of Ghana. So if there is a precedent in the past, that there has been a forensic audit before granted by the Electoral Commission and it helped to raise the credibility of their own institution. Why are they averse to it at this point? The MPP's argument the, is that it's not the, within the law. Well, of course, that has been proved to be wrong. <laughs> I mean, I think once well, the law doesn't debar the Electoral Commission and once the Electoral Commission has indeed allowed that before, which I believe helped improve public confidence and the public's acceptability of whatever elections the commission is conducting, I think it is in the good, in the interest of not just electoral commission, not just the NDC, not even just the MPP. And I think we need to appreciate these issues, but the interest of every Ghanaian. I think we have to understand that electoral commission is a public institution. Nobody wants to tamper with the law by which Electoral Commission operates. But we all have to understand and accept that the Electoral Commission eventually is accept, uh, uh, accountable to the people of Ghana. Now, having said that, if, as Kofi Adam said, on the day of election, some error is detected, that error may come as a result of incompetence, as a result of injustice, as a result of mischief, as a result of a genuine mistake, whatever the cause. On the day of election, you can't do anything. So whatever ought to be done, and whatever can be done, ought to be done and must be done before the day of election. So if in the meantime, we have another two months or so, two and a half months to go. These issues are coming up. And we, as a nation, have the 
opportunity of time to be able to address these things for the confidence level of Ghanaians to go up, for the credibility of Electoral Commission itself to go up, I don't see why anybody would describe it as an attempt to impugn the integrity of the Electoral Commission. Now, during Charlotte says time, when MPP was in opposition, the current president and top leaders of the MPP raised issues and questioned things that the Electoral Commission was doing and how they were doing it. At that time, were they impugning the integrity of the Electoral Commission or that they were well-intentioned? <laughs> I mean, sometimes when you look at this double speak, it becomes very worrying. That is why we have to do whatever it takes to give this country a completely new change that shifts us from MPP NDC discussions, discussions that come only out of political expediency to discussions that address, so what will be in the best interest of Ghana, all of our citizens, or at least majority of our citizens in terms of our politics, in terms of elections, in terms of democracy, in terms of economic development, in terms of opportunities for us to develop ourselves as individuals and as a nation together. These things clearly have hit a level where Ghana needs a completely new direction with radical, radical, revolutionary, not just mere piecemeal window dressing of changes, no. Because the issues we are addressing now, parties, MPP, NDC, are so deeply entrenched in their interests. So even when one side is speaking something that is objective, is a matter of principle, the other is already doubting and questioning. So it will be accepted or rejected only when parties can gauge their own immediate interests and what it knows to the benefit of a political party. It is a very dangerous situation where we are now, where everything is only considered in the interest of some political parties. Now, Alfred, mm -hmm. when you look at the errors that Electoral Commission is talking about, correct me if I'm wrong, my information is that the erroneous, quote unquote, the erroneous transfer that was done in the constituency of the minority leader was over 3,000 names. Yes, yeah. that's what they said they if, were inadvertently if, if, yes, uh, yes. added the yeah. previous years to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you see, in elections, the Constitution says whoever becomes the president can win by 50% plus, plus one. Vote. That one is not 1%, though. Plus the vote. That one percent. That, that one that the Constitution talks about, 50% plus one, that one is one single vote. One single vote. The lawyers are here. Martin, mm -hmm. if I'm wrong, yeah, correct. That's it. It's one vote. Mm. One. Mm. And a mistake. Mm. Yeah. And a mistake takes away 3,000 or so votes to another place where by the time you run between your voting center and wherever your name might be. That is, if they're able to tell you, say, oh, we wrongly transferred your name to this other polling station. By the time you get there, you know. So, so these are things that we need to allow good sense to prevail. Sometimes, and I've said this several times on different occasions, on different issues, when let's even grant that the law does not allow forensic audit. Electoral Commission, by its own power, is able to do things according to discretion. And the example I give them all the time is IPAC. The Interparty Advisory Committee is not a statutory declaration. It, uh, uh, it's it's a creation. creation. Of law. It's, not, it's not a, a, a statutory creation. Mm -hmm. It is a creation by the discretion of the Electoral Commission. Right. And look at the extent to which IPAC has been useful to our electoral and democratic process. So 
What stops the Electoral Commission within that same spirit to say that, listen, the stakes are really high. And let me repeat, the stakes for this 2024 elections are much higher than ever before. We can discuss that at another time. Mm. But I don't think many people would argue with me. Mm. Now, if the stakes are so high, it means that we should not spare any opportunity to do what improves the transparency, the credibility, the legitimacy of the final results of this election. I will be the first person to agree that no human institution, no human activity is perfect. But we still have benchmarks that we call best practices. And every serious organization, every serious corporate entity, every serious government and nation, every serious individual positions themselves to move towards best practices. So under the circumstances, we have issues with trust and public confidence in the whole process now is having to do with that very critical instrument, the register. We want to appeal to the Electoral Commission. Mm -hmm. Please, if this is the only thing you can do to send a signal that truly the suspicions that some people may have of undue, unnecessary, in fact, probably illegal, and wrong influences of the executive on the work and activities of the Electoral Commission, then Electoral Commission, please listen. Because you see, there is a lot of suspicion. They may be wrongly placed. They may be rightly placed. But what happens is that once the Electoral Commission takes certain steps, like Afarijan did, at least when he took that step, who can still go and complain about that particular issue again? He gave the chance, he gave the opportunity, he opened up, and then he sent a signal to everybody that, listen, I don't have anything to hide. Right. As we speak today, I don't think many people will argue with me that there's a lot of suspicion of some unholy alliance and marriage and, you know, relationship between the executive and the electoral commission. Mm -hmm. so now, we'll say they are for, in bed. They, you know, I mean, yeah, that, that metaphor. Can you, can you imagine? So, but does it not the, concern you? I mean, of course, beyond this, the, that every the, election year, the incumbent is said to be in bed with the, with the electoral commission. The bed they are sharing see, will lead to a still bed. <laughs> what, what whatever <laughs> product, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever <laughs> product <laughs> is formed out of that <laughs> bed no, will lead to a right. still bed. No, no, <laughs> see, this is, is interesting because the point I put here is that. What are they doing on the bed? <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever product they get from there will you lead know, to a still bed. What, what, I'm, what I'm saying here is that. <laughs> a letter commission hmm. should put people's hearts and minds at rest hmm. by going a little further, by accepting to do this forensic audit and other things that might not in itself solve all the problems, hmm. other things that legitimately hmm. and rightly improve the image and the credibility of the letter commission, hmm. improves people's confidence in the process and create the platform for acceptance of the final declaration of the results of this election. I am saying whatever suspicions people have about whether they are in a, in a chair or in a couch or in a bed, whichever way you look at it, a Electoral Commission can do something. And the power is in the hands of the Electoral Commission. Afarijan, I have said it before, and I'll say it, say it again, in my own experience. We all had our own criticisms of Afarijan, but I can tell you that in my lifetime, in my political experience, as a frontline politician, Afarijan, to date, is the best that we have had because of the way he handled even tense moments between MPP and NDC at IPAC, you know, mm -hmm. The, the way Afarijan will handle the issue, even yeah. when you are not happy, you are not happy with his judgment, yeah. you will you still will accept it. Yeah. And the best example I can give you, how he handled the time debacle. It was, it was exceptional. The NDC was all over. 
MPP was up in arms. We said, declare. NDC said, declare results. MPP said, no, don't declare. Afarijan said, let's sit around the table. We sat down. From 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Electoral Commission, NDC's team was led by Tony Litter, MPP team led by myself. And we went through the issues, argument and counter argument. At the end of the day, Afarijan said, okay, let's work the statistics, as both of you are saying. If we did go to time, mm -hmm. this is the current results. Mm -hmm. uh, Kufuado Atamils. If all the voters voted If for all the Kufuado, voters voted for one, one person, person, it, could tell it would results, definitely change tell the, the results. results. Mm -hmm. So we must go. Everybody had no choice. Than to then agree. We had to agree. Of course, when we went, it went in the NDC's favor. And that was mm -hmm. about it. So some of these and other things, we have the record to guide the current leadership of the Electoral Commission. And I, I would have expected even something higher. And I'm still expecting something higher from my good old friend, my dear Jean Mensa, because she has been in the forefront of civil society's move for improved democratic governance and practice in this country mm -hmm. from her IE. We've done a lot of things very positive with her leading. So now that she's in the chair at the Electoral Commission, if anything should go wrong, I think she would even more blamed than any previous chairperson. Right. Because I would say that she has such depth of experience and knowledge of the whole nitty gritty of the processes of democratic development and multi party at that. Okay. So, so really, a letter commission, if they don't have anything to hide, the stakes are so high, they are accountable to the public, I think they should agree to the forensic audit. And two, uh, they should use their discretion. Right now, we have just a few days to the filing of nominations. Officially, they should agree to give the independents copies of the, of the electoral register. register. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, and um, Elijah Harun and Mohammed, are you still on the telephone? Okay. Uh, Council. So, yes. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Great. To the extent that, yes, this is not explicitly stated in law, but there is precedence to it that you, the <laughs> MPP, asked for it sometime in 2012. Why do you think it should not be admitted to this forensic audit call by the NDC this time around, going into this election? Uh, Alfred, thank you. These are clear different uh, situations that you are calling. They are different. The MPP, yes, no, they are different. We call for an audit of inches in the courts, not no, we are not talking about, about the KPMG. No, I'm not talking about the KPMG issue. Pinches. We are talking this about during the registration during when the they did the first biometric registration. When the first biometric uh, registration process was done, you don't remember that you called for a forensic audit? Maybe he doesn't know. Did well, he comply with that? Yes, of yes. course. Of course. I cannot remember unless I go back to look at it. Okay. I can't remember. I right. am saying so, that, so that, that it happened. is within it is, it is within the electoral commission discretion to do so. But yeah. I'm pointing to the law and I'm factual on that. Right. It is the EC discretion to choose to do or not to do. Yeah, I and I'm saying that I don't speak for the EC. Okay. Right? Yes. So I don't think that um, somebody's constitutional right to call for something it's a questionable matter to another political party. No. We all have rights and responsibilities as citizens of this country. Okay. Well, Council, so this is mm -hmm. why I bring you in. Yes, because it's just a matter of the greater good, is it mm -hmm. not? Because I, th I think that the MPP's position is, yes, they, it's a fair call. Mm -hmm. They don't, they're not against it, but then again, the law doesn't stay so that yes. they, they would rather the Electoral Commission takes up that responsibility mm -hmm. to con correct the errors they have created themselves. But that against an external body coming to correct those errors, how would that help, improve on the, the trust that we've seen diminishing over the period? Yeah, so it's very clear that once uh, external or let's say third parties are invited to the table to help in their process, it's going to bring up or increase the trust levels, okay? Hugely, because then, you see, these are the main frontline stakeholders. Of course, the parties, uh, 
largely are lazy citizens, right? So if they get to come to the table and they see with their own eyes everything and, you know, they are satisfied, I mean, a lot of the tensions would go away. I don't know why this EC just insists on, you know, having a dear way. You've made errors, countless errors. I mean, it dates back from 2012. You see how the general election results kept changing. Didn't they change the general election results six times? Is that Adams? Yeah. Didn't they change the general yeah. election results yeah. six times? Yeah. You couldn't do common computation. Common computation. You couldn't do. So from day one, you've, you've had challenges with your mass, you know, and that's basic. So if the parties ask to see, for me, I think it's within the law. It helps uh, listen, bridge or it helps breed trust. So it's very, it's, it, it, for me, it's a no-brainer. What do we lose? Uh, did I see a, a, this in a headline saying that even UNDP is willing to yes. help come in and mm -hmm. help? That's uh, Dr. Manebuama indicated yesterday. That the UNDP, the UNDP <laughs> yes. has stated their willingness to help. And they've always so, been. Support they've always, the they've always yeah. supported. They've always, they've always been. Been. in 20, ah. they were the same yeah. organization. What are we that, playing with? Um, um, you see? Finance the process. You see? Of so once a, a financier is coming that I'm willing, what is your problem? You see, I've been telling you, you see, let's not forget. You see, <clears throat> Ghana, oh my God. From day one, <laughs> Bosman, Bosman who told the students that NDC is an existential threat to Ghana's democracy. What good do you think Bosman would what? do for Ghana? A, a professor, I don't know what kind of analysis, that NDC is an existential threat to Ghana's democracy. I don't know Deputy what, commissioner. What, um, yeah, oh, no, he said oh, so. Oh, Bosman, that's Bosman. That's, Bosman, the, Bosman, yeah. they appointed. that's yeah. the main reason they appointed him. Oh. So I know that this is a party hawk. Yeah, party hawk, die hard. The type that you see when we say 45%, you know each of the parties has about 45%, right? That makes it 90. Then there are the 10% of us in between who change every four years, eight years. Uh -huh. So Bosman, with those kind of statements, he identifies as blue, deep blue. Blue to his panties. Uh -huh. So no matter what you do, he's blue. Ah, that's <laughs> crazy. And then you are here, another one. So an easy that's packed with party apparatchiki. Jim Mensa. Oh, right. So Jim Mensa, when you are appointed, I said, I said, ah, Jim Mensa. Jim Mensa well, hadn't done anything with your hands. Jim Mensa hadn't the achieved the any the match the that the I am aware know. of. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't know how she could become easy chair. And so people who haven't achieved much in private life, when you make them, they, they do that so that they can control them. That's the main thing. Somebody who hasn't achieved much in life, you give the person a big position so that you can control. Because after all, you yourself, you know within that, Charlie, if we were doing it according to merit, you would be the last person to be given such an appointment. So when the person hasn't achieved much, usually they are the best candidates for these sensitive jobs so that they can be moved around, very malleable. Because if we're doing... ah. You see, and they run up to uh, the Charlotte or say appointment. Gabi Ochridaku and uh, uh, other persons in the MPP came up with an idea that, listen, let's, uh, the EC, the appointment, there should be an independent appointment committee for the EC appointment, like they do in Kenya. Advertise it. Then people would apply. Then there will be an interview in public. In process. And the, the media will broadcast. Uh -huh. Then you get, then there will be people marking, right? They will do the assessment, then we get the best candidate. That was what Gabi Ochidaku and the MPP And this asked is a for. process that exists in other countries. Exactly. But you, can, you see, eight years, they are not interested. Just like our beloved um, uh, public, uh, this, uh, the uh, asset declaration law. You see, Gufado, grandstanding. You see, you see your life now. Last year, September, I will give you world class. Uh, asset declaration law. This is September, one year. We've not seen the bill. Godfrey Dami came. I'm the one working on it. One year. It's an IMF conditionality. Asset declaration law. Say they know how they've so looted. That's a, is it the conduct of public officers? Bill? Yes. Uh, yes, yeah, the conduct of public and, and officers that, that, bill. that contains the, the public or but, the publication of the assets? Yes, publication key. So, ah, and you see Baumier's uh, uh, manifesto telling you that they intend to continue looting. His manifesto, he doesn't mention publication. No. He just said rather there will be declarations every two years. Who wants just declarations? Declarations that you cannot inspect, you cannot... Um, uh, it will not be published for people to help scrutinize. 
You so, see? Don't worry, lawyer. Lawyer. We, we, Now we, that you we, have we, spoken we, about it, Baumia will promise in the next We are doing so promise as you move. <laughs> 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 it doesn't mean what he says. The man is doing promise as you move. He's doing promise as you move. So now, even though it's not explicitly stated in the in the CI. Yes. I'll go for it any day. It's the easiest. I don't. This is a no-brainer. UNDP says, I'll give money for it. Boss Masari, please, Ghana doesn't belong to you alone. You are just one citizen. You are just one citizen. You think you will keep that office after Ikufuadu is gone? What is this? Come on, try and do something so that then you win public sympathy. Otherwise, just as the way Charlotte was, say, was kicked out, when there's a change in government, we'll say they should kick you guys out too. Just like that. Yeah, uh, uh, she and uh, this and They've Jim committed Mesa. so many yes. times. Sal, yes. Sal is yes. there. Sal, there are enough grounds to remove them. Enough grounds to enough wipe ground. all of them out after the elections. Uh, uh, you can't continue that. We will not allow party Aparachiki to continue to be appointed to the EC. In January, this is our constitution. There, there so you are preaching thing. government of national unity. Yes, absolutely. Yes. As no, offered, absolutely. as I've no, always okay. been offered as by outlined John Draman Mahama. Yes. Alan Shamati. John Draman okay. Mahama offered. Okay. Okay. All of you, MPP John Draman Mahama offered. No, no, no. no. Please, let's yes. so finish yes. this yes. point. Council, yes. yes. sorry. So, Government, uh, yeah, national unity, yeah, because you see, like I've told you, it's just you see, NDC, they are just the lesser of the well, two evils. <laughs> that is, they are just the lesser. Otherwise, NDC itself is we evil. Agreed. And we are, we are great, we are, we are great <laughs> leaders. We are making a we choice. Are great, we are great evils. leaders. Okay, oh, we have a third choice, we are, we are which is clear. And this is just the lesser so, you know, of the two evils. You see, it's sad. Uh -huh. But otherwise, there are still the same okay. problems. I'm except that we've just found that. Anyway, Ghanaians are listening. I'm happy they are listening. Press freedom, corruption, economy, democracy index. Then you see, okay, Mahama's administration is better than Baume and Alfred. Can you imagine? Mahama, who is a lawyer, can perform so better. Has been holding on for a while. Dr. Osan Kwapon has been holding on for a while. Dr. Kwapon, thank you for joining us here on, on Key Point. Um, I want to find out your quick thoughts on this matter of the trust element and the issue of transparency and credibility going into the election. Um, I want to find out your thoughts on, on this particular issue quickly. This element of trust, please. I want to believe that the Electoral Commission has put in all the processes in places or in place uh, that guarantees that my vote would be treated uh, with, the, with the sanctity that uh, it deserves. But more than just the vote, all the processes leading up to the election um, has treated my vote uh, with all of the sanctity. So my registration, my name on the uh, registers, vote, voters register, et cetera, et cetera. But more than just how I as a voter is treated, uh, part of the trust issue also has to do with other players in the elections, the most important players, your political parties. Your political parties have to go into the election believing that uh, they have been treated fairly and impartially by the by the EC, uh, and uh, as some of these issues, challenges, stories emerge, unfortunately, and in my opinion, it starts chipping away at some of the trust that is required to be reposed in the EC. And I've said this on your show and other platforms that the EC is going into this election having one of the lowest. Uh, trust levels expressing them by citizens as per findings from uh, the Afrobarometer survey. The last one was 2022. Uh, the, the, uh, there will be a 2024 one. So we'll be able to see over the next couple of weeks whether their trust levels have improved. But based on you know the most recent one, um, the, the trust level doesn't look Good, and that is why for me, uh, the onus is on the EC to ensure that whatever news comes out from the Electoral Commission doesn't undermine or chip away at that trust, but rather it gives us confidence to say we can trust the process um, as we go going into this election. Right, and and that's a crucial because and you admit that yes, there's been that trust deficit, and. You yeah. say that the EC appears to be experiencing the trust at its lowest level going into the election. Is that it? Yes, I do agree that they are facing a huge trust deficit going into the election. 
that is why I, I have been saying that it is critically important for them in how they engage the political parties, in how they engage all of the other stakeholders, but even in how they roll out and administer their own administrative processes as part of election 2024 should be beyond uh, reproach. Yes, mistakes do happen. Um, I think Dr. Bosman Asari recently described uh, an incident as an honest mistake. Um, I'm one person who is willing to give the commission the benefit of the doubt that, yes, honest mistakes can happen. But when you are operating under a cloud of mistrust, even the most honest mistake that the ordinary person would not be willing to give you um, a quote-unquote a pass on what you want to describe as an uh, honest mistake, which is why the processes. And you know, most of the time when we talk about free and fair elections, the focus tends to be on the outcome. We tend to say uh, someone won, um, generally, did we accept the results of the election, even if a particular contestant did or did not, um, there is peace. Therefore, we go saying, okay, this was a free and fair election. But for me, the freeness and fairness of an election is also reflective of what happens along the way. All these administrative processes that the EC engages in are crucial in ensuring that in the end, voters will deem the election as free and fair and also the political parties who uh, take, take, take part in these elections. That's important in there. And the, the remedial measures, essentially, is what has to be done. In 30 seconds, I'm rounding up. Uh, Nana, please. I think the, the position, as has been articulated around this table and from uh, our panelists, our participants out there, it's, it's very clear mm -hmm. that the Electoral Commission has trust issues to deal with. I would be surprised if they are not concerned about that. I want to believe that they, as public servants, are concerned about their own image as individual public servants and as, as an institution, as an organization. I think they need to be concerned about that. Now, mm -hmm. <laughs> one of the things that Alachamating has proposed in terms of dealing with the trust and confidence issues right. of public uh, officers, especially chief executives and heads of statutory bodies, is a major constitutional <coughs> amendment that removes Council of State, creates a second chamber of parliament, and gives that chamber the power okay. to appoint chief justice, electoral and commission, chairman, this, that, that, that one. Right. Then you can say that these are public servants who can truly be independent, autonomous, and it becomes easy for them to operate without looking over their shoulders, looking at what the executive uh, we, we have to, go. to see. I told you, thank you. Gentlemen, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. Lawyer Matic Pebble, mm -hmm. welcome back. Thank mm -hmm. you for mm -hmm. making the time to join us as private legal practitioner. Also, Kofi Adams, thank you very much for joining you us. You didn't give me really appreciate you. So, <laughs> <laughs> <Sarah laughs> Parliament for the Bohem Constituency. Uh, also to you, <laughs> Alhaji Haruna. Mohammed is the Deputy General Secretary of the MPP. In fact, in the coming weeks, he'll make some time to join us in studio. Also, Andy Apiakubi, who is a member of the Asantia Chimnov constituency, was supposed to join us in the studio. Um, he had is some issues to deal with this morning. It's an emergency, but he joined us on the telephone. Nano Heninto, thank you so much for coming. And then also, Dr. Osai Kwapong, really do appreciate your time. On behalf of the rest of the team, I want to say thank you so much for staying with us here on Keypoint. Join us same, same time next week. My name is Alfred Okansi. Have a great weekend.